For members only, Golf Smarter number 344, published on July 31, 2012. Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans. Your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. Because the ball popped up, it's like, oh yeah, well, I got under it, so I, I, I definitely teed it up too high. It's like, no, I don't think so. Yeah, when you pop it up, you need to tee it higher. What? Yeah. Why? First of all, you're too steep on the golf ball, so your angle of attack coming into the golf ball is too steep. If you tee it up higher, you feel more round in your golf swing. That's kind of what you're trying to do with a player when you tee up higher. You're trying to get them to swing more around like a tilted Ferris wheel. And I have it with my three and a half year old little boy is that he'll tee up as high as he can get it with his little driver that he has and the swing is flatter and flatter and flatter. So the higher he tees it, the flatter the swing gets and the better he starts hitting it. It's funny because I try and give the amount of information to my students as much as I would give to my son. And that's kind of where we're going with this, to try and give them as little information as I can to get them hitting the ball straighter and further. You start giving too much information to some of the students and they get just more and more and more confused. So when they leave a lesson, they have two or three things to work on and that's it. Popping up your tee shots? Tee it up higher with Frank O'Connell. This is Golf Smarter. Sharing tips and insights from golfers and golf professionals to help lower your score. It's worked for your host, Fred Green. Welcome to Golf Smarter for members only, Frank. Hey, Freddie. How are you? I'm fine, dude. How you doing? Awesome. I'm uh, I'm in beautiful Lake Tahoe. It's about, uh, I don't know. 61 degrees out and the sun is out so and it's gonna only get warmer most, right that's right better than most of my friends in phoenix that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> so you recently moved to the course at incline um and you're you're teaching up there right yep. and you came from the phoenix area where you were teaching for quite a while yeah i've been uh i was down in phoenix uh for quite some time uh i originally started teaching with uh Scott Sackett, um, one of my huge mentors, um, taught me pretty much everything I know about about teaching, and then uh, really got me playing playing really good. So, and that's kind of where I knew my calling was. I was a head pro for uh, one year at a course in, in Phoenix, and then realized that uh, teaching was kind of my forte. So, um, I hooked up with Scott, and I've been teaching now for oh, I'd say. 16 years now, so and uh, just have finally found a facility where all I do is teach all day. So it's uh, it's a great great position. And then uh, on top of that, putting it up in Lake Tahoe uh, couldn't be better. Uh, yeah, so. right, right. So you don't you don't miss running a golf shop, huh? No, I do not. <laughs> miss, <laughs> I do not miss running the golf shop. Oh, it's all about yeah. the teaching. Well, listen, we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bug you about trying to get Scott on the show as well. If he was your mentor, then why am I talking to you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, the, you, you take the B. You take the B plus guy, but the, when the A plus guy is available, you can give him a give him a shot. I'll I'll uh, I'll tell him to. I'll give him your info, and and we'll go from there. Awesome. Thank you very much. You bet. What's uh. So I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the course at Incline, although I really enjoyed it. It was a tough walk the day I played because it was uh, quite warm, and I even had a Golf Smarter listener, Golf Smarter member, come out from Reno and join me. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, but we, you and I, uh, shot some video um, before mm-hmm. I went out on my round of golf, and it is now up and available on the Golf Smarter TV channel at YouTube or at GolfSmarter.com. And I I really want to talk about this because we focused on straightening out your drives. Right. And that seems to uh, be a a classic problem, even on the tour level. Yeah, you know, you have a lot of guys out there. um, I think the, the biggest mistake that most players 
uh, will get into regardless of what level they're on is just their overall um, setup, posture, and alignment. And alignment being a huge part of that just because of the way that you're you're looking at your target. If you're if you're actually aiming, you know, 15, 20 yards right of your target and you don't realize it, you hit a ball that's right where you're aiming and it goes and you're thinking it should be going left, now you start making swing problems. Now you start developing swing problems, I should say. So you start pulling it left or pushing it right. So, you know, I think the big thing for the the listeners to understand is that you can only judge ball flight with proper alignment. So if your alignment's bad, then you're going to be, and if you don't pay attention to that, then you're going to be uh, kind of an uphill battle from trying to fix, fix your golf swing when it's really not a problem. And is that truly the case that a lot of people think their golf swing is the problem? Absolutely. Hmm. Um, and it's not? There's more. Yeah, I have fixed, I fixed a lot of golf swings um, over the past, you know, 10 weeks that I've been here in Tahoe where, where I've just put down alignment sticks. Um, I have this little device called a swing key, and we set that up for them, and they realize where they're aiming, and they just start hitting it. Um, the big thing that, that I let people know is that the swing, the path of the golf club, is a byproduct of what the body's doing. So how your body is rotating and how your body is turning will, will determine to some degree the path of your golf club. Keep going. I, I'm. I'm. I don't think you're oh, finished okay. with that thought. I want to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when 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 they're starting to swing, they start making swing changes with what's going on, and they don't realize that you know the, the way that their body's pivoting and moving is the big big huge thing. You know, um, working with Scott, the one thing that Scott always told us as teachers is that you know we are decent players and. and you know, we, you know, there's, there's, uh, things that we've done that we could accomplish more than the guys that we're teaching is he, he's never, he never told us to say, you know, use yourself as, as an example of here's what I do more or less throw it to the, the student of, well, here's what the guys on tour do. And this is what we're doing. Um, so the one thing that I try and do is get you started and looking like a tour player at a dress and get you finished like a tour player. So start like a tour player, finish like a tour player. That's something that everybody can do. They can swing on balance with a good finish. So those things are hard to do. If you're, you know, if you're swinging way over the top or way from the inside, you, your balance is going to be all tilted. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's big time posture, ball position, with uh, driving the ball in the fairway, you know, because hitting the ball in the fairway, that puts us on the offense instead of, you know, hitting it out of the rough. And and now we're playing just defensively, you know, to hit the ball close, obviously it's a big advantage hitting the ball in the fairway. I mean, look what Adam Scott did the first three days. I mean, he drove it 50 yards on average further than Tiger and, you know, a couple of hiccups coming down the stretch on Sunday, but, you know, so those are the things that he did really, really well for all three days. He hit it in the fairway, and that's why he had such a, a dramatic and a big lead going into Sunday because he drove it good. Right, and obviously, uh, if somebody's been listening to this now in September of 2012, we're actually referring to the Open Championship or the British Open of 2012 yeah. for Adam Scott. Um, and I, you know, do I want to talk about Adam Scott? You know. Did he choke, or is that golf? Uh, that's golf. Dan. Yeah, that's what that I is. thought. I, I didn't, I, you know, I don't, people are like, yeah. oh, man, he blew it. It's like, no, no, he bogeyed a couple holes in a row, but it was bad timing. Yeah. Dude. yeah. I don't think he choked. I think he just, that's golf. No. He had a couple of bad bounces, uh, balls that kind of hit in the fairway and then rolled into those bunkers, but mm-hmm. um, he missed out one little short putt. But, yeah. you know, I, we've all been there as far as, whether you're shooting in the nineties or in the sixties, you know, that one shot, you know, and that's all he needed. Yeah. You know, there was one shot the first day he, he bet he could take back. So, right. um, you know, we oh, just kind of golf and chalk it up and 
Go and, play the next day. And what the other part of it that that's golf, which is so awesome about the tour, is that when Ernie made that putt on 18, I'm, I, you know, you can hear fist pumps going all over the world. It's like, yes, he made it. You know, you got so excited <laughs> for him. You were like rooting for Ernie at that moment. And Absolutely. then when Adam had that final putt, all he had to do was make that one putt. And it wasn't a difficult putt to make to, yeah. to go into the playoff. And it's like, oh, we, we all felt the pain. But talk about feeling the pain. How about the, oh boy, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to space it out here, that drive, oh, that uh, Graham McDowell? Right, that just kind of almost killed some people from the fairway. Yeah, not the drive, just the fairway the, shot. Yeah, yeah, his second, his second shot into that par five. That, oh. you know, what can you do? What can I mean, you, I that's golf. I remember I, I played in a, I played in a tournament one time. I just hit a gold top. I hit it twenty yards off the tee. But I think that's good for golf because I think all golfers go. Wait a minute, I do that. Yeah. Hey, I. You, you know, know those the, guys are really good, but I can do that too. <laughs> yeah. When All your mind, yeah, when your mind starts thinking of other stuff than what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. and it starts wandering around, there's you know all these guys. I mean, uh, you go to the the 2012 Masters where the guy shanked it on 12. I want to get back to a couple of things that you have discussed, um, and that would be the setup, posture, alignment. And then I also want to pick on you uh, for bringing up the word target. But let's, mm-hmm. let's – can we break down setup, posture, alignment, uh, you know, piece by piece and, and walk us through how you believe is the correct way to be doing this? Yeah, I, I would say figuring out your posture, I have a – three by five foot mirror that I teach with that sits in my uh, teaching station down here. And when I put someone in a posture that they're kind of going, God, this feels so uncomfortable. And then I pull the mirror over and they look at it. And then I pull up a tour player um, positioning. They're like, Oh, I look the same as him. And then right away that, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem weird to them anymore. The feeling of the, uncomfortableness goes away. So working on your setup and getting yourself set up and into the right positioning, um, in front of a mirror, the big thing that we're trying to do with posturing is that what we notice with a lot of the tour players is that the angle that they make from the hip joint and their spine is right around 45 degrees. So that's something that you want to look for. And then from there, we drop the arms, we let the arms hang like loose noodles. And then from there, you give yourself a little bit of knee flex. And the one thing that you'll see a lot of amateurs not do is what we call spine tilt. Now, the spine tilt is not a, it's not a shoulder tilt, it's a spine tilt. So the spine tilts anywhere from, tour average is anywhere from 2 to 10 degrees. So you get that little bit of tilt, you setting yourself behind the golf ball. And then from there, you know, anything that we're going to do with power, we need to get behind. So once we have that good setup, there's our, there's our posturing over the golf ball. And then making sure that we're, we're aiming and we're lined up into our target and looking at our target. Now from there... Now I'm going now to stop you for a second before you go to the yeah. next next spot and hold that thought because I want to come back to it. But um, I want to spine tilt. So now we're talking about a left to right tilt, not a forward to back, correct? Exactly. And it's not – and this is – you just – you know, a light bulb went off in my head when you said that because I, I have seen, I have noticed, I try to do – um, that little bit of, of making it so like there's a straight line from my left foot all the way up uh, to my shoulder, but little slightly, you know, like tilted. But it's not a, a tilt from the waist. No. Right. So if you took, like if you took a club, like a five iron, a four iron, a longer club, placed it directly on your sternum so it went right down the middle of your body and you just bent you, you bend from the hips, so you get your 45 degrees, and then if, the, if that club then hits the inside of your front leg, mm-hmm. that's your spine tilt. 
that's the amount of tilt that you're looking for. Because if you think of the shoulders and the spine, it's just like a T. It's like the letter T, and then all you're doing is just tilting it. That's it. Mm-hmm. So you're just putting that T on a tilt with a little bit of bend, and then from there, now you you know you kind of go around and look at yourself in the mirror, and you get your starting you get yourself much more comfortable. I mean, having this mirror on the range is you know there's two things I have out there. I have an impact bag, and I have a I have two scales, and I have the mirror. So I got three things on the range: impact bag, the scales, and the mirror. And, and a bucket of balls. That's four things much, on the range. I got a bucket of balls. No, I got five things on the yeah. range. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, and then, so from there to give these, just to give those people that, that little bit of, of um, feel is what we're looking for. You know, they, they learn mostly from visual, kinesthetics, and then, you know, verbal. And, you know, if you ask my wife, I remember about 4% of whatever she says. So... Verbal just doesn't work. Well, luckily this is a members only show, so she won't hear that. <laughs> that you that you just admitted that. <laughs> and nobody. I want nobody of the golf smarter audience to repeat that <laughs> because you're gonna get called on it if you do. I swear but dear, you know, I only hear about four percent of the things that you ever say to me. <laughs> <laughs> I try to. I really try. Oh like yeah, sure. Uh huh. Yeah, I try to listen, but it's only four <laughs> percent. I really try for eight percent, dear. You know, <laughs> big four, it's Our wedding anniversary, her birthday, and then my kids' birthdays. And that's pretty much. That's about all I can remember. Mm. Don't, yeah, and don't forget, you have to pick up the kids after school today. Yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so now let's <laughs> let's talk about the uh now we got the tilt out of the way. Now I want to talk about the forward bend, you know, your posture getting over the ball. Um the thing that I have uh trouble understanding whether this is correct or not is the arch in the back. Some it looks like a lot of people stick their butt way out and then there's others mm-hmm. who tuck their butt in. Yeah. Right? Help you me gotta on that bend. One. Yeah, basically what you're doing is you're bending from the hip socket. So we're not bending at the waist, we're bending at the hip socket. So when you bend at the waist, that's where the spine has a hard time rotating in the golf swing. So when you bend at your, your hip socket, your back and stay your spine angle stays nice and straight. And then oh. that's where you're that's where you're getting that forty five degrees of bend at your hip socket and letting the arms hang. So then your butt is sticking so, out? Yeah, your butt does stick out. I mean, I I can't tell you how many times I write down on my on my notes for my students, you know, butt out, butt out, butt out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and take a look at a tour player. I mean, you look at an average tour player that's out there and it just that just happens to that just happens. But it's one of the key things that you kinda of look at when they're posturing over the golf ball and it's just you know, they just look a little bit uh uneasy and then they get the back flat the spine angle straight, and then bend, bend, stick your butt out. Interesting, because we talk uh, about, and everybody's heard about the longest six inches in golf being the spot between your ears, but I guess those three inches there between your, your hips and your waist are critical as well. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of what people are doing nowadays is that that golf, the golf shot, if you're posturing and your alignment and stuff is, I mean, the golf, it's missed already. So your chances of hitting a good shot decrease by a factor of 10 if you're not set up right. I mean, it's just that's just going to happen. You're going to hit it offline. You're going to hit it into a bunker. And then, to touch on the mental side of it, if you think you're going to hit it in the bunker, you're going to hit it in the bunker. Absolutely. <laughs> right. We say that so, all the time. Don't hit it in the bunker. Don't right? hit it in the bunker. Yeah, we'll get rid of that yeah. word don't. And what happens, you're saying to yourself, hit it in the bunker, right? hit it in the bunker. Exactly. If I said to my dog, don't sit, what does he do? He's going to (laughs) sit. So we don't hear the word don't. Hey, listen, if you tell your kid, don't do that, (laughs) chances are. He's going to sit there and go, hmm, he said not to, but I'm going to try it. Yeah, right. See how far I can push him. (laughs) Yeah. Um, uh, Well, Wow. So now this tilt um, and the spine angle and the forward tilt at the 
hip socket, not at the waist, which is a huge difference. Huge difference. Um, and and so we've we've covered the alignment part. Now we've got the posture part, setup part. What parts are, are do you see in the setup as common errors that um, are? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ball position. Ball position is is huge. Um, I know. Uh, you know, you see, you have a good player coming in, and 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 this happened to me. Um, a while back, you know, I went and saw my, my golf coach, um, you know, Ben Weeks down at the Southern Dunes in Phoenix and, uh, down in Maricopa. And then I told him I was just not hitting it right. And he's looking at it and he's like, well, look where you got your ball position, dude. You need to move it forward. So we move it about a ball forward and everything just kind of changed. The posture changed, the, the, the consistency of the hit and everything, you know, so it was those little tiny things that we that you kind of take for granted, and ball position is one of those big things that people take for granted. They just get uh, they get that out of whack. You know, a guy comes to me yesterday with you know he's hitting his drive. He says, "I'm hitting my driver bad." So he sets up to it. You know, the ball position for his driver is in the middle of his stance. His hands are in front of the golf ball. The face of the driver is de lofted. And I said, "What do you do? You pop it straight up, huh?" And he's like, yeah, how'd you know that? <laughs> well, your setup, it dictates and is going to, I'm going to, you're, I can pretty much tell how you're going to hit it just by the way you're posturing over this golf ball. So we move the ball forward where it should be in the stance and his whole, everything changes. His posture changes, everything changes. And the next thing you know, within, you know, three or four swings, he kind of fixed it all himself. I just put the ball in the right spot and, making some golf swings there. So to give yourself an idea of kind of where ball position should be, um, you know, the lob wedge through your eight iron should be right in the middle of your feet. And then from there, the golf ball just moves forward and away from you about a quarter of an inch, but never getting outside of your left heel. So there's, there's only about a, like a, four to six inch uh, area to where that golf ball should be placed, you know? So the thing that you're trying to do is that we're trying to make sure that the body remains in the same flex and the same positioning, but the golf ball just moves forward in your stance and a little bit further away because of the length of the golf club. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So you want the – you want to st- – Get the ball well. You want to step back a little bit or, or push the ball away from you. But as the club gets longer, you get to your driver. You want it to be a little way, not only uh, forward. Huh. Yeah. So, so basically, what Great. you're doing is that the spine angle, all the the angles that you create at setup, will dictate what you can and can't do in the golf swing. So, um. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to maintain the same spine angle. I mean, you might get a, a little bit taller with a driver, mm-hmm. and that ball might be just a touch further away from you, just a tiny bit of a reach with that driver. But otherwise, your hands and your spine, your knee flex, your bend at the hips, um, th- those are all those things should kind of just stay right there, and those clubs should just move, and the ball should just move away from you, maintaining and keeping your your posturing the same every single time. And that's where people have, I mean, consistency, they want consistency. But if you're, if your body is changing often all the time, you know, then that consistency is just not going to happen. You're just going to, you're going to be all out of, all out of whack. So, so ball position is, is probably the biggest, biggest thing that that I have an issue with. I think one of the more entertaining things I've uh, I enjoy witnessing on a golf course is self analysis of a bad result of a swing. Meaning that when somebody makes a shot and it doesn't do exactly what they thought they were going to do, and with most golfers that at least that I play with, because I don't play with scratch golfers, most golfers make a lot of mistakes or don't have the results they had hoped for with most shots. 
<laughs> and my one of my favorites is uh, when they pop the ball up off the tee. And you said, like, you knew before the guy swung, you know, just because of their position, right, that they were going to pop it up, right? Yeah. yeah. My favorite is, I teed it up too high. Oh, I know. And you know and that, you know, you- someone who tees it up, they, they tee it up pretty much the same way every single time. Sure. But they think that by, sure. by because the ball popped up, it's like, oh, yeah, well, I got under it, so I, I, I definitely teed it up too high. And it's like, no. I don't think so. Yeah, and you actually need to tee it. When you pop it up, you need to tee it higher. What? Yeah. Why? Um, when you tee it up higher, that's going to give you your, your – first of all, you're too steep on the golf ball, so your angle of attack coming into the golf ball is too steep. So if you tee it up higher, you feel more round in your golf swing. So that's kind of what you're trying to do with – a player when they when you teed up higher, you know, um, you're trying to get them to swing more around like a, you know, it's like a tilted Ferris wheel. So, and I have it with my three and a half year old little boy is that he, you know, he tees it up, he'll tee it up as high as he can get it with his little driver that he has, and the swing is flatter and flatter and flatter. So the higher he tees it, the flatter the flatter the swing gets, and the better he starts hitting it. So it's it's um, it's funny because I try and I try and teach, or I try and give the amount of information to uh, to my students as much as I would give to my son, Michael, and and that's kind of where we're going with this to try and give them as little information as I can to get them hitting the ball straighter and further. So. You know, you, you start giving too much information to some of some of the the students and that I have. They get just more and more and more confused. So when they leave a lesson, you know, they have two or three things to work on, and and that's it. So there's not a ton of things because basically what we're trying to do is is fix the motion in their golf swing and go from there. So when you get a, a person that's popping the golf ball up. It's basically you start looking at their body position and how they're pivoting and how their body turns and rotates pretty much dictates how they're going to start hitting the golf ball when they start coming and chopping down on it. Um, Am I correct in assuming that the times that I pop it up and, oh, I pop it up, um, (laughs) oh, I pop it up, uh, is my angle of attack on my swing too steep? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, you need to. Well, because and, and I'm again, thinking. Oh, yeah, I just came down too hard. Yeah, you just need to feel yourself swinging that club a little bit more around your body. Right, flatten it out. You know, is what you're saying. And flatten it out a little bit. Uh huh. You know, so good ball position. You know, so if, if you with a driver, if you proper setup, you know, um, not for nothing here, but I haven't I haven't missed a a fairway since Ronald Reagan was in office. So. You know, some of the things that I contribute that to is through my setup ball position um, and consistency of getting that set up all the time. But so if you take your feet, you put your feet together and the ball is right in the middle of your two feet, you take about an inch or an inch and a half step towards your target with your left foot and then a big step back with your right, you're going to get the same ball position each and every time. And that's what you're trying to do. So the ball position with a driver, it's got to be forward of, of in your stance, so just just off the left heel or just slightly inside the left heel, and then step back with the right, and that sets the whole body in motion as far as giving yourself that chance to start hitting the ball in the air and in the fairway. I'm so glad that you went in that direction because that's what our video is about. Um, the video that you give instruction on how to straighten out your drives is you really focus on centering the ball between your feet, take that very little step forward and then a larger step back. And I'll tell you, since we've done that, and that's what I love about producing these videos for people is I, you know, as a visual learner, as well as audibly, of course, um, but it, it just was so graphic to me and it has really helped me um, 
not only straighten out my drives, it's also made me slow down on my swing. I'm not swinging as hard. For some reason, I'm just feeling more comfortable. But I love the idea sure. of flattening it out, too. Mm-hmm. You know, Nicholas always said if he wants to hit it further, he swings it. He swings it easier. Yeah, that's the counterintuitive you know, part of this thing. I was, yeah, I was working with a a, a little a guy on the on the Gateway Tour a, a long time ago, and you know, and uh, Kyle Blackman was his name, and you know, we were just out playing, and and we were standing on this par five, and he's like, "All right, I got to get, I got to get home in two. First of all, he's you know, he's five foot two and 150 pounds, but he does hit it far. Um, but I, what I pointed out to him was that I'm like, Cal, you hit, you just, you hit one about 310 on the last hole. I go, did you try and hit a 310? And he was like, well, no. I go, you hit this one like 285. And so quit trying to hit it 310 and just swing at it. Right. You know, you're creating more and more tension in the golf swing. And from there, you, you know, tension is just going to, cause more problems than you're going to know what to do with. So you got to swing easier to hit it further, lighten up your grip pressure mm-hmm. and not try and swing so hard. Yeah. Don't swing hard, so, swing, swing fast, huh? Yeah. You, you just trying to generate, you know, you're trying to generate club head speed and, uh, and, and move it as quick as you can. You know, I had a club fitting down at hot sticks and, and I was working with the, one of the guy that, that runs the place down there, Alan Gobeski, and, and we're hitting some balls, and he goes, dude, I want you to swing at it as hard as you can. So I go ahead and I swing at it as hard as I can, and club head speed went down from about one, 109 to like 106 to 104. And here I am swinging at it as hard as I can, and I lose distance and lose club head speed. Wow. So it's that type of thing where your body just gets out of sequence. So when you're standing over a golf shot and you're trying to hit it hard, you know, you're going to lose, you're going to, your chances are you're going to lose distance. You know, think of the, think of the layup shot. You know, you got 200 yards to the, to the little brook that you got to lay up in front of. And you take your 190 club and you go ahead and you swing it. And what does it do? It one hops into the brook. <laughs> you're like, what the heck? <laughs> you're right. It just killed that, you know, because you weren't trying to hit it far. You were just trying to move it down the fairway. And, you know, you hit it further than you've ever hit that club before. So those are the things that we try and get, you know, the, the tension, you know, trying to get people to relax a little bit when you're hitting golf balls out there and you're trying to play. So it's a, uh, it's a game where, uh, you know, I've tried to quit twice. <laughs> I've, tried to get, I've tried to get out of this business twice, and it just doesn't. You know, it doesn't happen. I had a, a nice job offer with uh, with Morgan Stanley from a, a cousin-in-law, and you know, I have an associate's degree in, in turf management from the University of Massachusetts, which is basically growing grass and being a superintendent. So that uh, that kind of fell through, and then uh, I got into I tried getting onto the police academy with uh, Scottsdale Phoenix Police Departments when I was out in out in Scottsdale doing that. And, uh, you know, just the thought of maybe not coming home one day was not what I wanted. I had a young, my 13 year old daughter, I think was about six, five or six at the time. So going home and seeing her every day was something that I wanted to do. So Mm. that kind of, that kind of shunned that away from me. So, so in the interim, when I was, when I was doing that, that's, you know, so it's just something where this, this game, this game's going to drive you crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you never own it. You just borrow it. And all we're trying to do is just borrow it longer and longer and longer each stretch that we get into. Well, so actually, I think we're uh, ultimately we're trying to borrow it shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the goal to have fewer shots and spend less time on the golf course? No, we want to borrow those good stretches. Those okay, good times okay, we're good. Playing. When we're playing good, we just want to we just want to borrow the good times longer and longer and longer. Take a a longer lease on it. Yeah, so yeah. That's what we're trying to do. And and the more that you know, the the more people will will go out and you, you get your instruction. You know, it's easier to fix as you get closer and closer and closer to it. Mm. So 
that's the big thing that I've noticed with a lot of with some of the a lot of the students that I have now is that you know they'll come um, you know the repeat customers that are that are coming back and and they're doing the body's going to go back to what feels comfortable. So when they start doing that, it's a little easier to fix. We fix it a little quicker, and they're like, "Oh, okay, I get this now. This is a lot easier than the first time that I came and saw you." I played with a guy who said, Fred, you know what I want for Christmas this year? I said, what's that? He said, two good shots in a row. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ben Hogan, he always said, if I if I'd shoot in the 60s, if I could hit it, just one perfect shot around. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So Everybody has their like interpretation of that line. It's beautiful. Yeah, uh, he, man, Frank, I'll, you know, I have so many points here that I'm walking away with that – are incredibly valuable. I'm glad I was taking notes, and I, you know, I advise every listener to listen to this again because, boy, playing on the offense play versus playing on defense, what a what a concept, uh-huh. right? And yeah, you know, and it's it's not. Uh, I didn't invent all this. So no, again. but you're reminding us, and it's so important. You got the spine tilt. You bend at the hip socket, not at the waist. You tee it up higher if you're popping. Uh, you, this was this was incredibly valuable, wonderful stuff. I I really appreciate it, and I advise anybody if you're going to be spending any time in the Lake Tahoe area. Um, Congratulations, first of all. It's magnificent. Uh, go up to Incline. Go to the golf course at Incline It's and check out golfincline.com. Um, and check out Frank. He's the director of instruction there at Golf Course at Incline. Uh, and he's obviously very happy to be there now. And we're very happy to have you on the show, man. Uh, do you have a website that people can find out more about you? It is. It's, uh, it's frankocommagolf.com. Two N's, and, two uh, L's? Two N's, two L's. Good. And uh, just uh, you can log in there with a, just an email address and name, and i got some tips uh, that are going on there. And then we'll figure a way to uh, to get the ones that you and I did together. Yeah. Throw those on there, too. So, well, um, and, yeah, and also the, uh, just if, if you want to see Frank do a little bit of instruction and see what a snap dresser he is, uh, check out check out the video on how to straighten out your drives right there on Golf Smarter TV. Hey, buddy, um, I hope to have you back on because there's some things you brought on that I have not. Uh, I want to pursue further, but I know you have a lesson you have to get to. So, All right. thanks so much for your time, man. It's great talking to you again. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. 